Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. Welcome to The Advocate. Permit me to do a spoiler and say that we will be spoiling you on this edition with our usual quality menu. I will be serving up the first dish by addressing the matter that is at the heart of our nation's fragmentation. No, not corruption, but our, our lost innocence. One man's loss is another man's gain. Liberals, on the other hand, resist an advancement of another kind as he takes on the matter what he calls immunity for impunity. Uche continues on this sober note by asking, what is the value of Nigeria's life, Nigerian's life? Priceless would be my response, but I take she isn't only asking me. Treasure is back, and this time she draws an interesting connection between spousal violence and financial independence for women. Hmm. This one I just have to hear. Ekene wraps up our banquet by taking us back to our roots. We're talking Wazobia here. So much to come. We better get started after the break. Never let the childlike heart vanish, innocence of which has been taught to you to flourish. That's a quote by Justina J. Robello, regaining our lost innocence. My friend Praise Fowewe says, the problem of the world is an adult and the solution is a child. Nigeria today walks at the precipice of disintegration. We have become so fragmented and divided along religious and ethnic lines, and it's so heartbreaking to see we have abandoned the communal way we lived in the past. Today, we are a society of silos, living only within our high walls and barricades. There's so much distrust, mutual suspicion and fear, so much so that even noble efforts of one region to tackle insecurity issues that should ordinarily be commended elicited so much rancor and outcry simply because they do not trust each other. But the truth is, we have not always been like this. Nigerians once lived like good neighbors within a community that is based on mutual respect for our differences. I remember when we celebrate Christmas with our friends, even when we're Muslims, the time when we will go to the bazaar with our Catholic friends with the full knowledge and permission of our parents, even as Muslims. Those were the days of innocence, when all you see in a person is his or her humanity, not his tribe or the way he or she worships his creator. So what went wrong? What happened to our innocence? The same politicians that stoke ethnic divisions to remain relevant politically do not remember or recognize tribal or religious differences when they share their loot. Last year, Amcon, that is the asset management company of Nigeria, released a list of debtors. 20 debtors owe 67% of, of the five trillion debt accrued. What is even more interesting is the composition of the debtors. What you observe is the perfect camaraderie among the ruling class. We must reopen our hearts to one another. We must regain our lost innocence. We must learn to forgive easily, as children do. And we must regain our humanity, because great is a human who has not lost his childlike heart. I was quite touched by your advocacy when I, <coughs> when I came across it, because I said, you know, there's something very simple and yet very poignant about it. Um, recently, I was listening to a radio discussion around the Almagiri system. And what made me happy, though, even though you had people speaking very frankly about their distrust for the North, and you, you could hear a lot of things that people hadn't been able to say in public. They were finally able to say, oh, these people are holding us back. But then even better was that you had some Northern people who were educated who came on and said, look, let's enlighten you as to you know, the real situation on the ground. So you actually, so what I'm proposing 
is open dialogue. Yes, you know, the um, elite, as you pointed out, have manipulated our differences. Mm -hmm. But if people begin to talk, when you now have... So, because stereotypes only flourish when you don't have conversations going. But if someone comes to you and says, look, you have a, a northern and you engage with them like you went with your Catholic neighbors, mm -hmm. then you, you are less likely to believe that they have two horns on their head. And, you know, because you know, you know someone from the north. So this is what the NYSC and some of these federal unity schools we're trying to deal with. But now we, there's so much fear, there's so much every man for himself that people don't remember the human being anymore. But that conversation I heard reignited re in me that there's hope. People can have more conversations around the issues, especially those thorny issues that people run away from, religion and tribalism. Let's talk about them. Is it really meant to divide us? Can we, can we not have complementary you know, tribal relationships. Uh, you know, that's where... Yeah, I'm, I'm itching to, to say something. Please yeah. say it. <laughs> you, you find Scratch out that these problems uh, <clears throat> were not created by, by us, even if we talk about them. If the right people who ought to talk about them are not talking about them, people will always say I blame politicians. Yes, because they found the embers of this division. In 2015, after the election, you expected the president after election to say, look, now I'm the president of everybody. Since he said, I belong to nobody and I belong to everybody. The moment he came with that message of, you don't expect me to treat mm. the 97% the same way I would treat the 5%. The 5 that was a statement of division. And then his appointment came. They were all skewed towards one direction. Yes, some people that lost out will look at those areas and say, yes. Look at. And then, that also didn't help matters. His advisors, media advisor, if you complain, they say you're a willer. Mm -hmm. Genuine complaints. And, and so, thought this also further divided us. But like Sedu had said, when they gather, look at um, yes, Ribadu's uh, uh, son's uh, wedding. Mm. Right. All of them were there. Look at um, uh, the governor of Akwaibom State's uh, Moses mother, father's burial. Now. They all were there. And now, coupled with the insecurity, Ordinarily, I would love to send my child to Bauchi to go to school, but I can't do that in all honesty because I'll be putting that child at risk. I wouldn't want to do it, even no matter how much I love to be a Nigerian. My last advocate, I dressed like an Arab, and you know, somebody told me, oh, why are you pandering towards the knots? And I said, you saw the video, you didn't see any message there, your it own is impressive. pandering towards the north. When I dressed like an Igbo man like you, I wasn't pandering towards the, the, south, the south. When I dressed like a Benue man, I wasn't pandering towards uh, the you Benue people. You haven't done your bad dress yet. Yo, I did. Mm -hmm. and, and so, and here you are, these are the message that these people want to push down our truth, so that the more divided we are, the more they continually, you know, rule I mean, over us. divide and rule thing. Uh, and, and, and the only way it can be solved is for them, them, not we, you no matter how much you talk about it, it's for them to sit down and say, look, this will not help us. Like, and then let like, their followers also Like the Emir of Kanu has started to talk yeah. about. Yeah. But I mean, the other problem is, like we, we all know, when the rich class or the elites, you know, we don't, that, that, the whole thing about religion and uh, all that doesn't really come into play. You see them hanging money out like we said. Money is the bond. Yeah, money <laughs> is the bond. So it's really the, you know, the lower classes or the uneducated people that, you know, hold on to this whole religious, uh, you know, what would you call it, division. And then they use it to decide who they want to fraternize with. Some educated people talk. Some, uh, yes, some do, but it, it is mainly, and, and when there's, so when there's no history being taught in schools so that we are able to like respect each other's culture, respect each other's religion and so on and so forth, all they're going to, they're just going to hear these politicians saying whatever they're, they're saying and they're going to take sides. So I think like Libra said, we can discuss it all we want, but it is um, leading by example that will make the change. Now, if, um, Buhari comes out and now says, you know what, Nigeria is for all, forget all these things. Like, he should have done that in his new cabinet. He should have reshuffled, he should have brought in, made it more inclusive. But he still chose not to. I mean, when you sit around and you see all the service chiefs are uh, northern, what does that tell you? No, you're right. I mean, clearly there's a... But I'm, I'm still saying that because I'm not a fan for wait till. Of course they ought to, and of course that would be the quicker way to get things done. But whilst we're still waiting to hear from them, we can't let ourselves be manipulated. Well, you know, you're not I understand zombie. what you're saying. Is, <coughs> like John C. Maxwell says, everything rises and falls on leadership. On leadership. Mm -hmm. You're the leader, and you're leading a divided people. 
The onus is on you to unite them. And then the onus is on you and your lieutenant to find out <clears throat> what are those factors, what are the things that are dividing your people and tackle from the roots. No, but he's saying that that's not in their interest. They're not interested in uniting. Yeah, but, yeah, so maybe right. we need to take the onus and vote in the right people who have our unity as I agree with you. But you can't sit back and yeah. keep passing the box to people who clearly don't care to do what you're saying. It's just like, you know, you, you just, just like... I think no, uh, fair enough. Speaking, we're, we're, we're also speaking to them. Uh, when I was writing this advocacy, it, it was, you know, the thought around a child, you know, who... That they didn't know has anything. empathy, mm -hmm. yeah. no jealousy, no all those vices that divide us today. Yeah. We need to, you know, take introspect and take yeah. take well, a cue from them. Yeah. But you I know? also think that it the fellowship us. also have yeah, um, a great role to yeah, play. Yeah. No, but, but, but frankly, listening to listening to you, I you took me back to my childhood. Exactly, it's mm -hmm. true. It, you're a Muslim, I'm, it's Christmas, I'm sharing yeah. plates of yeah. food with you. Where Your mom is telling you, go and give to this and give to that. And you get there, they give you money as mm -hmm. well. I you know, growing up, we roast the ram for salah. So what, what happened? What changed? You know, so did, I, I, did we become more day, religious? Did we was, become, what, what changed? I, there was, so no, we are, we, are, we are more no, no, religious I, I think now. our we're children are still... Religious. But less godly. Our, 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 less children are still, <laughs> our children are still like that. Like, I know that my child is still very innocent and all of that. But he will get to a certain point the where it will now be made, as, yeah, yeah. made no, known to him. That is a, in yeah. So what is like socialization we coming from? Yeah, like for schools, instance, I'll tell you, homes. his school, what I like about his school is though he's an evil boy, he is made to learn Yoruba. You know, that already will make him think, oh, yes, I'm, I'm you know, I'm well, well, including other people. Yeah, he'll appreciate that. Really. T t quickly, um, before I round up on this, uh, you find <laughs> out that the, <laughs> the, the average, you know, Nigerian see Boko Haram as a Muslim thing. Boko Haram is not Islamic. And I expect our leaders to let us... What is the National Orientation Agency uh, doing? You took that question Absolutely out of my mouth. Sense. You know, let people know this is on Islamic. Some people bought that idea initially, thinking and they that. Sold you, you know, so the these single are some story. of the, 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 the some of the issues. The well, <clears throat> so, you, so you think our loss of innocence is bad? Then I'll be diagnosing another cancerous tumor after the break. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they would like. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually worked. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Parliamentary immunity, also known as legislative immunity, is a system in which members of the parliament or legislature are granted partial immunity from prosecution from statements made by them on the floor of the parliament, which immunity can only be removed by superior court of justice or by parliament itself. So here we are, immunity for impunity. In 2016, after the arraignment of the former Senate president for false declaration of assets, the Nigerian National Assembly members already packaged the bill proposing immunity of principal members of the National Assembly on the ground that it is necessary and fair for the heads of National Assembly to have immunity from criminal prosecution, akin to the one enjoyed by members of the executive as prescribed in section 308 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, as amended. The then minority leader of the House, Goswil Akpabio, even laughably proposed that all National Assembly members and House of Assembly members should be given immunity as, according to him, elected officials who are saddled with the responsibility of ensuring good governance should be allowed to carry out their function without any form of interference. I see you chuckle at the mention of good governance. You saw me laugh too. Despite the defeat suffered by the bill in the hands of the vociferous Nigerians, it has found its way back 
into the current assembly, having passed second reading in both chambers of the National Assembly. Yes, you heard me right. This is nothing but an attempt to confer immunity on all members of the National Assembly, while we are still grappling with immunity conferred on governors and presidents, some of whom have had to empty the state treasury into their personal pocket and have succeeded in turning the Senate into a retirement home for former governors. Why are they still discussing immunity for lawmakers when the leadership of the National Assembly is no longer under threat of prosecution, like it was under Saraki, and is firmly now under the grip of the executive? Why pretend to be, want to be at par with other arms of government when it's a notorious fact that judges only enjoy immunity from words uttered or written in the course of their job, which is akin to parliamentary immunity that our National Assembly members already enjoy? Why, we're also aware that sometimes in 2016, judges' houses were raided at midnight by men of the DSS, State Security Services in Nigeria, and the seven chief judges of the Federation was subsequently removed from office in 2019 via an ex parte order, and judges didn't ask for immunity from prosecution. So why are our lawmakers suddenly thinking immunity again when despite the snail speed of our criminal justice system, we're beginning to see some of them who were former state governors behind bar and more are preparing to, to, to join them. If you like, say Jolly Yame, Joshua Darie, Oju Zokalu, and those that are preparing to follow. If you say Teodoji, Yoya Ono, are we not ashamed talking about parliamentary immunity? When even international flights meant for our airports have been diverted to Ghana for lack of modern landing equipment. Anyway, I'm Minister for Aviation and asked airline operators to take advantage of insecurity in the country to make money from travelers. I weep for our ineptitude. Don't we have enough blood on our hands in the country as some of our lawmakers can no longer travel to their constituency or even travel to perform oversight function? Is it not time for them to take drastic measures to improve the situation in the country, like even initiating impeachment proceedings against the president, rather than issuing or passing mere resolution to obtain immunity for themselves? Why do we like ridiculing our country this way in the eye of serious-minded nations of the world? Is it not bad enough that politicians, aided by senior lawyers, are now mocking our highest judicial institution, the Supreme Court, with a barrage of applications for review of cases long decided with a stamp of finality? Now we want to add another one, immunity for lawmakers. Soon we'll be asked to grant immunities to kidnappers, armed bandits, terrorists, and what have you. After all, we are told that repentant militants can enlist in the military now. Previously, we granted amnesty to militants, and now this new one is coming up, despite us not being able to defeat the same Boko Haram for years now. Who calls this country safe? I would therefore advocate today that the idea of immunity for either arm of government should be completely jettisoned as it will open a floodgate for impunity, which is already ravaging the soul of this country. And Nigerians should be aware that if this bill is not opposed, official looting will someday become the norm in government that will wake up one day and realize that there was once a country called Nigeria. To them that have yes, let them hear. Otherwise, it will be to your tent, O ye Nigerians, very soon. <laughs> Whoa. He just, he just nailed it. No, I think you've so spoken me. the mind of a lot of Nigerians. But you know, my, my, my worry with us, having articulated all this, how can we further exercise our powers uh, as no, I can, citizens? I can come in That's where you well, this is the going. same way. The same way we exercise our powers over the social media bill. You see, when it when it affects you in a particular way, you now find the way to exercise your power. Nigerians spoke up about that social media bill. There was never anywhere that nobody was putting hashtag hate speech. This one, where we were speaking up. Now, what I find even very interesting is that this. I haven't even heard. I did not know that this had come up oh, again. Really? I didn't know it had gone oh, into second that. reading. So thank you for mentioning it. Now I'm going to use my platform. I'm going to make enough noise. I want Nigerians to know because this is the most ridiculous thing I've heard to, to think that these people can like raid this country, destroy this country and then ask for immunity. The no. thing is, what are they wanting immunity for? They, they want to be protected. Well, you, you know that your hands are clean. You've done the right thing. What are you running away you see, from? Why do we have our governors running to the Senate as you rightly say? No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Let me suggest, though, to, to bring another side. Some are arguing that they want immunity 
in the event that they are tackling the ex but we know it's the executive rubbish. and they want to come after them. Yeah. No, she asked the question. No, he who comes to equity must come with him. Clean hands in the first place. They need it because no, they're no, trying no. to protect want to be themselves witch because, because they know. Even if your hands mm. are clean, you are not a witch. Nobody will hunt you. Then all those in the civil service also should look for immunity because if they are doing the right thing, then anybody can come for them too. So we all should just start immunity. More than anyone else. No, but the media has immunity. The media. I think to answer that maybe. It could be distraction from their legislative duties, yes. like uh, yes. the last Senate president spent quite yeah. a substantial no, but time, you know, going to court. Okay. Back and forth. Okay. If you look at it from done. that angle, Should but he, I honestly yeah, don't I mean, agree. I don't agree, it. but I mean, that's, that no, could be an ang no, angle to it. But the only know? people that should really have immunity, I think, should be like the president and maybe... They he, should not even no, have. They shouldn't, yeah, but I'm saying if, if it means to try and get things done for the country, let those two have it. But for the rest... National Assembly, reps, and all that. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, but before you come in, I wanted to just highlight the point that he made, which is even the immunity, because I believe he was reading with regards to the British parliamentary system. Mm. They have a, a sort of, you say, qualified immunity, which is to do with no, what even you say. Even in Nigerian the parliamentary now. system. So you don't need to enlarge it further. There, so there's that a the parliamentary immunity act. Not, not prosecuting you entirely. No, any, yeah. Yeah. any yeah. words from you anything. utter on the floor of the chambers, you're, 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 you have you're covered, immunity. Mm, yes. uh, you know, that is why. You take you on for, and also, no, yeah, whatever in, you in say, just like a judge, you know, whatever a judge says while sitting on trial, he has immunity. But you know, they, but let me try and clarify with you. Are they, are they saying that now this immunity would cover, even if you wanted to look into maybe fraud? Yeah, that's what they're saying. Absolutely. So that's what they're saying. After, after yes. their tenor. That's okay. what they're yes. saying. I think, I think what we should speak up against is this trend of former governors running to the Senate asking for immunity. There's so much to speak up against. So you should... You should look for, we should be able to evaluate your performance. Mm -hmm. We should be able to say, you did this rightly, you did this wrongly. Can we have our money back, please? This is not uh, uh, looking right. Yes. Because what are you getting them, immunity there's for? There's only a limit to what you can keep on the front burner. If the governor enjoys immunity and then he gets to the National Assembly, mm. he's enjoying now immunity. Now wants immunity and again. And then he's there for, there's no... Mm. There, Eight years. No, no, it More can be than. there for eternity. Yeah. And, and so a life, there is a no, lifetime. Yeah, a lifetime. And so at the end of the day, that's why I said immunity for impunity. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Are they, what you'll be gradually encouraging is that any governor, once you finish your tenure, you can still you as much as you want to the, house 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 the house Senate. House Make sure you bulldoze your way there, like Ozekome will say, mm. and refuse to leave that place. You, you know, so that's, how why, do you that's why it's do or die, isn't yeah. it? It's, that's it's, why, it's, that's why it's, they, it's they fight suspicious. to keep moving it's, from one uh, form of government to the, the next. To the next. They know what they've done, and they don't want to be exposed. The bottom line, really, it's about, you know, uh, covering their their tracks, they yeah. their tracks. Yeah. 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 yeah, but we permit this coverage of tracks as a people. If yes. we rise up to say no more, we don't want this anymore, and we rise up to say we don't want, and then it's going to be we don't want. Like yeah. yes. and I, I just so want to how do you, how do, you do that? If you're going to recall. Uh, a House of Reps <laughs> member. How long would it take? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, don't even bother. But, but let me just. Yeah, these are some quickly, of the powers we yeah. should be able to. Yeah. Sorry, say, let me just quickly buttress before Libros rounds up. Is to say, look, yes, this is because I was thinking in my head. Why is this more important than all the other things? Buying cars and all these rubbish bills they pass in their favor. You know, um, lifetime pensions. It is actually because this is where you you, you close the Check. door. Mm, yeah, yeah, because without yeah. this, the, the horse has bolted. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's why the purpose of sounding an alarm is that there should be some kind of remedial response. After the break, Uche asks, what is the value of the Nigerian life? Now, that sounds like a rhetorical question. I can't wait to hear Uche. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they would like. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually worked. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. It is a rhetorical question, Libs, because come to think of it, 
why should I have to ask the question in the first place? What is the value of the Nigerian life? Every day we hear of killings, kidnappings, fatal motor accidents and so on, with hardly a word from our government. Even if they do say something, it's usually to utter empty mechanical words such as, no stone will be left unturned to bring the perpetrators to book. How many times have we heard that and how many times have the perpetrators been brought to book? Hardly ever, if at all. Instead, we have a senator sponsoring a bill to create an agency to rehabilitate and absorb repentant Boko Haram members back into society and worse, back into our army. Nigerians lose their lives every day plying our terrible roads, yet nothing is done about those very roads. Relatives and friends cry and mourn, but soon move on as they know, just as the rest of us do, that no amount of tears will move the government to action. It is each man for himself. Never have we known the level of kidnappings we're experiencing today. Some roads are no longer viable as they have been taken over by bandits, herdsmen and armed robbers, rather than deploy more security personnel and measures to protect citizens. The opposite is the case. Our security personnel are usually nowhere to be seen at the hotspots, leaving vulnerable Nigerians at the mercy of terrorists. We can all remember the Otedola Bridge explosion, which happened in June 2018, that claimed lives. Yet, tankers that are usually not roadworthy still continue to transport PMS across the country during rush hour. Very little investment is made in our education, housing or health sector, and it shows. Most of our public schools and hospitals are so dilapidated and ill-equipped for purpose, fake drugs flood our markets, and no provisions made for affordable housing. The average Nigerian is aware that if they rely on the government for anything, they're on a long thing. We know that the fact that we're alive today is only down to God's mercy. We have no assurance of security from our government. If we complain publicly, we may be disposed of or taken into custody by security operatives. Yet every four years, we trek to the polls and cast our votes for the very same people who place no value on the Nigerian life. Some of us even selling our vote for as little as 2,000 Naira. So what do we do? We have two options. We can either continue along this path or start voting the right people in and holding them accountable. Get to know our rights and fight for them. After all, what value is a life without security and freedom? What value is a life without security? Yes, um, no matter how, how attractive the return on investment are in your country, if there is no security, nobody will put a cobble there. Exactly. Nobody will put a dime. In that and, and and unfortunately um, I always say this we are very religious now we leave everything to God live and for God um, you you're traveling on the road you are attacked by arm robbers there is no police like you said there are no, even when the police come who's protecting the police that is protecting you <laughs> the salary is not secure mm -hmm. the army man salary is not secure but yet government are buying cars foreign cars they are Nobody's discussing their salaries and allowances. Mm -mm. And yet you're talking about immunity for them. We talk about, uh, we, we fight ourselves for even calling government to action. They say it's hate speech. Now you're talking of, don't even talk again. It's hate speech. Something had to give. My own is not whether we continue or whether we vote them. They should know as a matter of fact that if we continue on this trajectory, mm. very soon, soon and very soon, that Liberia, when they were telling Liberia, no, don't do this. Some chief judges would give an order and think that because you are up there, it won't affect you. But when the war started, even chief judges were at, at, at I mean, a, um, rehabilitation camp, refugee camp. So if, most of these leaders, if they don't sit down and think that they need to begin to do the right thing, when it happens, mm. I sorry. Isn't democracy the government of the people by the people for the people. That's what it should be. So at what point did we abdicate our responsibilities as a people? And at what point did we give the power within this democracy, of this democracy, 
to the people we have voted. You asked a question in your, in your um, Advocacy, article. Yeah. How do we vote the right people in? We, the people. Because it looks like the people we are electing have the power to be elected and not be elected. And even when you elect them, they have the power to go to the Supreme yeah. Court and the Supreme Court will say, mm -hmm. you are not the one again a day to the inauguration. Mm. Mm. I'm pretty sure Seydou can answer yes. you on that because yeah. Seydou has a problem with the Constitution. And to be honest, Absolutely. I actually agree uh, that it started no. from the Constitution. The Constitution is not we, the people, as mm. we have it as today. It it's not we, the people, that promulgate. That Constitution is not us. It has us. nothing to do with It's something that was foisted on us. But we've had so the Constitution not, <laughs> We have constitutional And they crisis, didn't change anything, did they? What, how many, it, it's, uh, it's still, those conferences mm. are not... The way a proper constitution should be uh, constituted, you should have people voted by. So, so what would you want not, to see not amended? You nominating people. No, what would you want to see we amended have to decide, in the we constitution? Have to yes. So, is that the a constitutional con thing? No, I'm telling you. See thing. the constitution. Why the I think the constitution is very important is because the constitution will determine the kind of leadership, how we want to be ruled, le, le, the le, kind le, of leaders, we, and how the leaders we produced, okay. Okay. all of this okay. things. Okay. Do no, we no, even no have way. goals no way. as a people? No way, that's what I'm saying. That's, you see, that's where the problem is. We don't the have people, goals. Now, every year we amend the constitution, we say, American constitution is like a pamphlet, you know? Your, all the set of rules and laws cannot be contained in one document. You know, I tend to agree with liberals on this. And, it's and not so, the you find out that we, the during the election, it is not the constitution that says You're looking for right that people you to must apply right collect 200 or 2,000 naira to sell your vote to somebody. Mm, it's a human being. In our polling unit, we came out and said that day we, we called it, we called it um, <laughs> um, votes, votes and flanger. Mm. So I coordinated, I ensured that, you know, all the people, the rich men, we went, you know, they came out, we collected monies from them and said, we'll buy drinks here, we'll buy food. Yeah, but the thing whether, is... Wait, quickly, whether you are a poor man, whether you are a rich man, so. let us all come together and vote, ensure that these votes are protected. So it was about voting. And yeah. nobody would come here and say, I want to give you 2,000 naira. How many of us did that? at our various levels. Okay, Nobody okay, who bother voting. Uh, okay, and then okay, you sit down complain. I have to round up. Soon. No, no, bear with me. Let me just make this point because I haven't still thrown mm. my two penny or my two kobo inside. Okay, um, you, it was fascinating when you sort of said, oh, every time they'll come and throw out a statement, uh, something as empty as what, what yeah, one of the no And even today, I heard on the news, he yeah. says, deal with these people mercilessly. Mm. So somebody has the question before, Uncle, what, were they dealing with them mercifully? Mm. So the point is, I feel government governance is a partnership. Mm. You need to hold them accountable. I know we keep using that word and it sounds like it's a cliche, but even at the local level, you say, okay, you said that you'll do this. You haven't done it. You give them figures. Because that's the only way, dealing with what we have already. Mm -hmm. Going forward, you can now start saying how we push the right people with conscience mm -hmm. to the fore. But right now, what you have on the ground are people you need to hold yeah. accountable. No, I agree. But I'm not, I, I, I want to speak get for voted, here, And actually. then the life of the people who voted in means nothing yeah. to them. But I do think that our constitution does uh, confer certain powers yeah. that prevent some people from, you know, facing holding prosecution of, of, yes, or from us uh, holding them accountable. But well, you need the right so, people to then No, fair enough. So in order to turn okay, it. This is all where right. Well, which came first, the chicken there the you egg. go. <laughs> Sometimes we ask the question to provoke some sober reflection. Here's where we look forward to reflecting on your observations on our advocacies. On Nigeria for Sale, Niger Loop Videos says, the only way, what happened to sideways? Anyways, fair enough, it's your opinion. Nigeria is for sale, for real. Niger Loop, I know you appreciate that the only way is up is an expression of optimism. We keep looking up in the midst of our challenges. On does Nigeria need a multi-party system? Fetch <laughs> says, it's a shame that no one here is debating on people's comments. Not sure what you mean, Fetch. <laughs> anyway, we just read out your comments, so feel free to follow up on this. On the Megacity Part 3, Urban Development, Comrade RSA Incorruptible says, Megacities are well planned and standardized, not a dumping ground for all comers like Lagos. Do keep your comments coming in on Facebook. Plus TV Africa, hashtag TheAdvocateNG. 
or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to www.plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Treasure may be cracking open Pandora's box as she explores the causal elements behind the rising spate of husband killings. You may need to sit back for this one. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they like. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. Right, Uche, I didn't know I was that much of a fire starter. <laughs> but simply saying what, we, what needs to be said, as we do here on The Advocates, no holds barred. Now let's look at spousal violence and financial independence for women. I think spousal women have been on the increase across the regions of Nigeria lately. I have wondered again and again why more women are killing their husbands. Although the men have also been doing the same, the statistics are alarming by the day. Social media is awash with gory tales and photos of women who've allowed rage and the thirst for vengeance to overwhelm them. I think at the root of the spousal killings is insecurity, financial and emotional insecurity. There are no figures to show that our foremothers were stronger than us. However, in their time, women were not maiming or outrightly killing their spouses this way. I feel they were generally emotionally stronger, and it cannot be because polygamy was pervasive then. Perhaps our men should do more than one wife deliberately. Ah, don't throw stones at me yet. <laughs> the truth is that the majority of them may not be able to afford keeping a home with two, with two women in today's Nigeria. But seriously, why are postmodern women this week nowadays? I know the betrayal from a spouse can hurt badly, can be, you know, terrible. And yes, we do feel like a rug has been pulled from under us. Nevertheless, we must value our own lives more. We must value our future more. We must value our purpose more. Woman, you can't give the reins of your future and the power to rise above pain to a man that betrayed or hurt you. And this brings me to financial security. I think we should begin to socialize our girls into money management early in life. We must teach how to invest early in life so that our girls grow up financially and emotionally confident, financially and emotionally intelligent. Our mothers should concentrate more on strategy sessions for the bride on how to hit the ground running as they get married. This would be more rewarding than the many trips to the markets to pick a shoebi and souvenirs. I know it's our culture, but you, you know, don't overdo it. Times have changed. Older women must now teach coping mechanisms for housewives and career women. Our women conferences can be more resourceful than the talk shops they are at the moment. How can more women own houses and businesses? How can they scale up and have access to loans that can help to sustain them? Look, the rhythm of the music changed a long time ago. A good strategist does things differently to get the unusual delivered. I see the wife and side chick battle raging. I read the cooking wife arguments too. But seriously, ladies, all those WhatsApp groups with no particular focus are a waste of time. Let's focus 
on more important things like investments and scaling up our businesses. The dynamics of today's marriages are different from those of the 80s, the 90s, or the beginning of the millennium. We are formidable, we are smart, we are resilient. So let's start to deploy our energies to being stronger, emotionally and financially. These spousal killings just must stop. Let them stop because we are wiser and stronger together. Sorry, I jumped in so quickly. It has, no, it has let me, less, I'm, I'm going to, far less to do so, with financial um, independence. Exactly. I, I was, I was going so to so come in on that one. That I think maybe emotional, but not really financial. Because from what I can even see today, many women are the breadwinners now. They're, they're the breadwinners of their homes. So, so, so I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, so what really is the bread? Because even when you look at the... the um, what, what will I call it? The range, the different levels of the women doing this. It's not just in a particular class. There's a lawyer that killed her husband. There's, you know, some people are just naughty. Um, I don't even know how to describe it. But, it, you know, it goes across a, a spectrum. So I think more, it's about emotional, emotional stability or emotional maturity or whatever you want to call it. Because um, our mothers, like you, you mentioned, our mothers were more resilient. You know, whenever their husbands were messing up or whatever, they took their mind away from the husband and focused on the children. Exactly. You know, but here now and today, and I know what liberals will say, look, oh, the Western people brought in this no, thing. No, that, that, <laughs> it's not me, it's But anyway, let me not speak for you. It's not, it's more of, that's my idea. Mm. It's more of a written of marriage, really, and what marriage is. You see, um, there are some persons who would do far better, well, if they were not forced into marriages. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, you see, the society these days, a girl, once you are 20, 25, your parents are, oh, where are the men? Under and then you pressure. see people are in church praying for life partner, wherever he is, release devil, <laughs> release him for me. Enemies then, release, devil then, release. Yes, and meanwhile, this, and then you see some also, some who are doing well, they have the capacity to live well, buy houses, and buy beautiful cars. They say, if you have all of these things, no man will come. And so you have this societal hangover of the husband crowns the woman. And then the man, the woman keeps herself waiting for that man, and then you marry a Tokumbo man, you know, and the problem starts. You know, because all your expectation about of what marriage is, you know, it's completely destroyed from the beginning. And so we need to begin to change all of those ideas about, look, you can be you can be whoever you want to be without marrying if you must i can decide to have children I have a friend his father had four, four, four of them no wife and they all came out excellently well you know but there are some people also in the same vein who will have four children they can't take care of and it's fight every day. i'm not saying don't get married but if you're going into marriage you, you know there should be understanding you know you should know what it is and then some people would lastly, so that I can yield the floor for a kidney, oh, you know. Say thank you. And, 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 and then there are some. <laughs> imagine a, a woman. This one is not a first wife. The sec wife number two. You know that there was a first wife before they married you. And it is the wife number two now that is jealous that eventually killed the man. Oh. You know, so no, but Liberos, let's even bring in, what about the, is it the four women that raped their husband to death because he was only focusing <laughs> on one, one wife? And then the, the rest of the wives said, nah, you can't carry on doing this. We're going to all That's do crazy. you to death. It and is. they did him to death. So again, you know, it's not even really about whether you're a second wife, whatever. There has to be some emotional um, maturity before you go it. into marriage. Also, maybe we now need to start teaching people anger <laughs> management because I don't know why people are getting to that point where they don't know that to walk boiling point. Mm. Yeah. I, 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 I did I did an advocacy I, I think uh, some time ago about you know values that getting into marriage it has to be people that have shared values because mm. these, these are two people with different values different baggages coming into a union and sometimes you get to that point where you can't your coping, coping mechanism is stretched to a point where mm -hmm. anger and other things you know come out so you need to understand your partner whoever you're choosing you need to do some offloading understanding you mm -hmm. know knowing that you know we're not all perfect and you need to adapt to certain things you mm -hmm. know believe it because they say what you tell yourself is what becomes eventually reality. becomes you mm -hmm. know so in marriage you need to um how do i say 
you know that equation that they say uh, one plus one is two in marriage, mm. one plus one is always one. Mm. So once you've made up your mind that, look, this thing is going to work, you begin to find excuse for your spouse. Mm. Things don't, because like NL, NLP, they say nothing means anything except yeah. the meaning. I mean, so from when you, you give empowering meanings, mm. you know, to uh, situations, you find that your marriage would tend to work. Sorry, Libos, let me just no, uh, throw in my, my, I, my cover. Thank you, sir. Yeah. And what I was going to say was, when I look at marriage, because she mentioned her four mothers, and I look, I remember my mother, my, my mom's mom, she used to call my granddad Namuku, which is like my lord. There's a certain expectation. She was powerful in the home, she handled, but she knew her own space. I'm not saying we should go back to that, but I think expectations, somehow we're caught between the world that used to be and you know the social media world what mm -hmm. we think we should be and so there's a lot of conflict going on in the minds of women so a lot of times they feel abused and robbed and then they like you're saying you and your partner are not even on the same plane somehow your caveman husband didn't get the memo <laughs> that you're seeing yourself as you know i don't know <laughs> hollywood wife mm -hmm. so we need to sort of sync it up and then i still feel that sometimes when you talk about financial independence because i know someone who was advocating for that it's almost like you're living in two two people living in the home, but side by side. You're mm. not competing with your husband. So there still needs to be that understanding that yeah. in as much as you're financially independent, you can yeah. still run a common account and various things together. Whoa. And then what someone I else see, came yes. recently, just to quickly yeah. give another illustration. She was saying, oh, Nigerian women who are successful, I'm addressing you. She's a friend of mine who's been on this program, so she'll probably hear this. You know, I'm addressing you. Don't go and marry Nigerians. You're not destined to marry a Nigerian man. Look for you, Bo, you who are outwardly yeah. thinking, who are more oh, progressive, wow. who won't hold you down, so you won't be frustrated. And I said to her, no, because you can still find Nigerian men who, if they love you enough, they will keep Cook up with whatever you. your aspirations are. So love is, for me, the language that transcends yeah. all of this. And if you right. take love out of marriage, you don't have to marry. It's not by force. Mm. Okay, for me, I think our women, Nigerian women, should just get it once and for all. When you marry, that man does not take over everything about you. So then he buys you everything. And, and, and you, you seem to not have a life or a mind of your own anymore. So, so, so when, yes, yeah, so, so when anything it, happens yeah. between both of you, you don't feel like your, your life is collapse. over and how you're going to move on. Okay, I'm just going to kill you. Yep, you promised and you certainly <laughs> delivered treasure. No holds barred. After the break, we'll be keeping it frank and perhaps a little feisty. No promises though. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. When the options are clearly pointed out to you, making the right choice isn't exactly rocket science. So I'll be talking about living culture, dead culture. Your children do not speak Igbo. Shame on you, was the pious exclamation of a colleague once in reaction to my honest, unapologetic response to her inquiry. I wondered why I should be ashamed for a crime I didn't know I committed. What was the crime and why must it be approached from the point of view of a crime committed anyway? Sometimes we treat culture as though it's a mark of righteousness, a stamp of an elite group of belonging, thereby shutting the door on those who do not share our rituals. Not so. Culture is meant to be inclusive and relevant to everyday life. It's not a relic to be propped up. We're all for promoting culture and even ensuring the longevity of our mother tongue. However, let's not neglect to acknowledge the truth that culture must be organic, an expression of a life being lived in the present continuous tense. It can also be an evolving shared experience arrived at by a con conscious or unconscious consensus to preserve that shared experience. Therefore, for our children to speak Igbo or Hausa or Yoruba, we must naturally or even artificially create the relevance and need for the language. Trips to the village, get together with family members that speak the language. Of course, we too must speak the language at home. Some may say, why does culture matter? Why should I speak in my mother tongue? 
For the individual, not only does language and a shared culture expose them to a layered identity and a sense of obligation to a wider community, this in a world that is increasingly self-centered. Culture brings perspective by broadening the vocabulary by which the individual may assimilate and even interrogate life. You could compare it with the option of enjoying a rich variety buffet versus the same set menu every day of the week, 52 weeks in the year, for the rest of your life. I know what I would choose. Recently, I read about how a traditional ruler of a certain Nigerian town interrupted what was said to be the mob justice of a woman supposedly caught in adultery, as the townspeople asserted that her first son was not the legitimate offspring of her husband, now dead. They were poised to make her swear and undergo some ritualistic form of adjudication when the wise ruler blocked their moves by stating simply that what was required was a DNA test to settle the matter, pure and simple. You could say that particular culture had reached its point of transition. Nigeria is blessed with a rich buffet of cultures and languages. As a people, we must be prepared to preserve the old, but to do so with an eye on the evolving state of affairs. We must be part of a living cultural revolution, or else vainly hold on to a dead relic. It's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah, yes, yeah. so but, 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 but really, um, like you said, culture evolves. Um, that's why even in law, um, when a culture, it's, um, that sometimes you say the culture is um, barbaric. Uh, there are three tests for a, a culture for it to become, um, you know, relevant in law. Is it um, repugnant to natural justice, equity and good conscience? Is it uh, contrary to public policy? And I can't really remember the third one now. And so there are some of our cultures, like that culture um, that you were talking about is um, not only repugnant to natural justice, it's also, you know, contrary to public policy. And the ruler was uh, actually a lawyer. Uh, exactly. And so <laughs> that's, that's why, why he had to use those uh, validity tests. We mm. call it validity tests, you know, for a culture. So some of these cultures were cultures that, um, you know, we practice those days when, um, you know, there were no, you know, technology to mm. actually test this thing. It's like even some of our adage that 1,000 holes and cutlasses cannot break down a rock. And I tell you, just put one dynamite, it will bring it down. <laughs> you know? That's so, my favorite thing to do. So, so and then, but then for language, it's very important. Um, sometimes we are also um, not unmindful of the fact that it should play a very important role. But... The world we live in today, our mother tongue, whether we like it or not, is English. We interact in English every day. We do businesses with English. And so sometimes you find your default mode. You speak English at home. And then in some cases, you know, intermarriages. We marry from outside of our tribe. And then that conscious effort to speak your language to your children is not there. And that's why you see some tribe will tell you, no, you must marry from home because they want to preserve okay. that language. And, mm. you know, but for some of us, it's not, uh, we try to make conscious effort to speak it to our children, even give them the name, you know, so that they'll have that identity. But we are losing it. And the earlier we also try to remember and try to take it back, take those parts that are good and retain them and marry them with modernity, the better for all of us. I, I think culture, right, it's, it's identity, and we must guide it jealously. Mm -hmm. um, I agree that there are some repugnant uh, yes. ones that we should, you know, do away with, but we should not lose that identity. Over time, with the advent of uh, internet and uh, social media, there are some things, some culture that young guys today will tell you is not cool, but it's our culture. It's our identity. It's us as a people, you know, and it's a story we must continue to tell ourselves paint our culture positively so that our yeah. kids would push those cultures. You know, otherwise, because now, if you'd ask me, um, over time, you notice the white, the, there's this thing about the white and the black person. It's, mm. it's fashionable now to be light-skinned mm. because you, know, you, you tend to associate light beauty. skin to beauty. Yeah. In the European version. What happened to the of black Caucasian. beauty, the African Nubian that was mm -hmm. like sought after in those days. It's a narrative, it's a story we tell ourselves, and we need to begin to change that. We need to preserve our culture, because the only thing we can bequeath to our children, 
And we should not allow this external influence to take that away us. from us. Yeah. Yeah. You see, I can see why the friend of yours castigated you, really. Because, you know, it's not I'm saying she's right, but I can see where she was coming from. Because, unfortunately, we, you know, we don't seem to place enough emphasis on retaining or teaching our kids our, our language. And, unfortunately, every time we lose culture, our own culture, we then gain the Western culture. You know, it's not like we're, we're losing it and then we're gaining something better. We, we drop that and then we now take on somebody else's culture that doesn't actually quite fit with our background or the way we are. Um, culture, language, definitely, for me, is vital because language is about identity. It also gives self-esteem. You know, it makes you feel Connects proud. Connects you to other people. Yeah, and I mean, why, if you lose your language, then what is to tell anybody that, you know, you are from here and the other person is from there? Because when you lose your language, you also lose other things that come with language. See, there's so many proverbs that my mom used to tell me about in, in Igbo. I can't even say them now. Why? Because I've, you know, part I've of lost you. that. I've lost that side of myself. So I really think it's important that we we um, protect our culture to no, a degree. But yes. Even what, but so the me, reason I even brought up yeah. my friend very quickly because mm -hmm. I want to hear is that it's not so much that I don't want my children to speak Igbo. Is that the approach of making you feel as if you're a criminal for nothing? That's not the approach. You, you need to understand that, that trying to the tell child is being exposed. So I'm to preserve that culture, the approach should be let's keep them in a world where it's natural for them to see the relevance. No, of, but it's not an artificial. But I, can, I, can, I can see why the person attacks you. Know, because no, because attacking me won't stop you. Maybe not you, you, but you see the problem and is I would attack before somebody. it was you know it was the done thing to when you come back from wherever you start speaking for 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 you know for all over the place and it, people even recognize that and and thought oh. You know, it elevates you above. Mm. So in her mind, she's looking at you being unapologetic yeah. about the and fact that am. your children don't speak like your language. Let, let me quickly chip like slamming in. women for wearing um, weave on. Mm. If you make the Nubian look more attractive, then they'll, uh, you know, you don't go and be attacking people about their life. I am more attractive. of a doer than a talker. Mm -hmm. And this... Or talk Nadu. Nadu. <laughs> and this is so important to me that I did a book okay. on my childhood. Excellent. And documented the culture, the Yoruba culture that I was socialized to. In that book, you find songs, you find folk tales, mm. you find the Recipes, intangible everything. part. Yes, food. Mm. You find the interview and the tangible parts of that culture mm. in that book. Because, mm. look, you speak it to the children. It doesn't end with the language. Mm. There's but is more that, to is it. a song in that book? There are Ol songs. Oluro Mbi, Quite a lot of them. I have also. You need to bring Badu it when next you come. Re, re, mm -hmm. I have a lady, Jife, Eli Jife. A lot of our so children. So, what is culture to you? Yeah. I, I want so to know. Cu culture to me. Just as he said, it's your identity. Mm. I'm a speech coach. I teach, you know, English as a second language, you know, to second language speakers of the English. Mm. But you see, I will still speak my language and even my dialect. I will still tell proverbs, use proverbs as I speak. Mm. You know, even when I'm speaking English, I love Chinua Achebe mm -hmm. because the way he yeah. he transliterated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the why I proverbs. said. That's why I said you, you will still fill the ego. Exactly. That's, in those yes. Yes. that's why I said you. Problems. They will have to. You can't do away with one. There had to be a fusion of the two, and that's why you find out that some of those Evolving. writers, yeah. you know, they will have a. They, they find a way of intertwining. Yeah. You yes. know, the language with English. Right. That is the you burden know, like, of even, globalization. Even Nandia we used to, to do it. Yeah. If you can't, if I can't see because the coin, then mm -hmm. I better Chimamba. number. Mm -hmm. And and you know Sorry, what I, I like about We've culture and why we must preserve ours, no matter how strong this globalization pull is mm -hmm. on us. The Indians will still do their namaste, even mm -hmm. if they find themselves at Chatham House. Mm. The Italians. But what about so, the Chinese? Yeah, the all Chinese. Of them. All of them. You know, so we okay, The French. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you, everybody. <laughs> uh, all we can do is set out our stall. The real conversation takes off from here. So keep your comments coming in on our Facebook page, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to www.plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. We look forward to making a date with you this time next week, same channel. But till then, let's keep advocating for a better society. Day one. Puyaka. <laughs> <laughs>
Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they want. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.